Hi everyone, today I would like to talk to you about terminals and terminal emulators and also how to automate them. I am using Alacrity, there are various other terminals like Western, Kitty, built-in terminals in various systems, but my terminal is Alacrity and I hope that you will learn how to automate with Alacrity and what cool stuff you can do with it. So let's start by refreshing on some command line concepts. So what is emulator and so on. So we start with a physical console. When computers were very old, they actually had a special physical console that was an original terminal hardware that somebody would log into and start typing commands. And today this is a physical keyboard and screen. Then we have a TTY, which essentially nowadays is a kernel's terminal driver, and it's managing inputs and outputs. Then we have a program such as Alacrity, which is a terminal emulator. And the task of this terminal emulator is to render everything correctly, get the characters from the user input, get the characters out from the system. Uh, then we have shell, and shell such as bash or zshell is a command interpreter. So when you type a command, a shell's task is to interpret it and pass it down to a system. And finally, a prompt is a command input indicator that you can customize, and it's just a blinking terminal cursor, or it can be more elaborate with uh, various programs like um, simple, uh, simple term or, or others. All right, so with this out of the way, let's talk about terminal emulator specifically. So when a user enters a command, the terminal emulator processes the input, passes it on to shell, the command is executed in the system, and then output is returned and terminal emulator puts it back together from characters and displays result to the user. So there are various configs and settings that you can influence how the colors are displayed, whether terminal supports opacity and other things. And this is all terminal dependent, um, but most of modern terminals support a variety of interesting use cases. So about Alacrity, this is a very fast uh, terminal emulator uh, that is GPU accelerated, meaning that it's not only your CPU that does the job, but also GPU. And if you have a complicated rendering like uh, terminal user interfaces that display, you know, heavy or a lot of lines, then this is definitely uh, useful. Uh, programs like NeoVim uh, definitely benefit from this as well. Alacrity comes as a single binary and is configured using TOML. Um, and it can be installed on Linux, Mac OS, Windows, um, OpenBSD and, and others. So it's very, um, very well um, known in the ecosystem. Uh, it is extensible as every other command line tool. I'll show you some of the examples how you can use Alacrity to automate some of your workflows. And um, it also has something called Hints uh, that is a very interesting uh, addition to Alacrity. And I want to show you how to use it. So the key features, uh, we have the core GPU accelerated um, terminal the configuration layer, and from there we can configure things like uh, Vim mode and text navigation in Alacrity. We can add custom actions to hints and hint, use hint system. Uh, Alacrity supports uh, hot, re hot reloading or hot swapping of the config file. So we can use uh, this, for example, in uh, reloading themes. And there's many more things, but that's just like a main features that we're gonna talk about today. So let's uh, start by talking about the hint system. So hint system really is um, a way to recognize patterns on the terminal output. And based on this regex recognition, uh, capture certain parts of the output and execute commands on those parts. A good example of this is a URL. If you have a URL output on the screen, then you can use hints to open URL in your default browser. Actions can be different. You can open, you can edit, copy, or do 
anything with custom actions. So this is really powerful and I'll show you this in a second. So how it works, a user triggers hint mode on the output. So in my case, it's control one for URLs and control two for files. Then Alacrity uses regex to scan the visible um, viewport of the terminal. And if it finds a uh, regex match, then it returns it and it shows the hints overlay. And then I can select a hint uh, using a key that Alacrity assigns. And then depending on my configured command, Alacrity will execute a command. So it can open a file or open a URL in the Ford browser. One thing that is really interesting and um, fun to play with are themes. So Alacrity supports a variety of themes. You can see me using a black theme most of the time. I just like it, but you can make it uh, any color. You can make any opacity and um, add all kinds of interesting colors uh, if you like, and I'll show you how. Um, another um, useful part of working with Alacrity is a Vim or copy mode. So in the terminal output, you can essentially enter this mode and then you can treat a terminal output as a Vim buffer. It doesn't support all the Vim motions, but it supports enough so that you can um, interact with your buffer really quickly, copy text and uh, interact with it or save it to a buffer. So let's swap to, to a demo and I'll show you first the Alacrity config. So first line here is uh, just my Alacrity theme. So you can see uh, this is just a Dracula theme and it's a Tomal notation where we have you know, various colors, uh, cursor settings and so on and so forth. So this is simply a, a theme uh, and I'll show you in a second how to swap those. So now we have live config reload set to true. Anytime I change anything in the file, it will be automatically reloaded, which is super useful. Now we have some key bindings. You can see here, um, shift, control, and space is bound to toggling VI mode, and I have others, other key bindings as well. Here are the hints that we are going to uh, see in a moment. This is a configuration for the hints, and the rest is also pretty self-explanatory. We have a font. I'm using JetBrains Mono Nerd font, and then we have uh, other uh, other settings. All right, so that's a quick overview of Alacrity uh, configuration file. As you can see, it's 74 lines, including empty lines. So this is not that much really, and this is pretty simple config. So let's show how hints work. So you can see here, I listed content of a directory uh, that is part of this video. And wouldn't it be nice if I can hit a shortcut and open any file that you can see on the screen. So that's what hints enable us to do. So if I hit control two, you can see letters appeared everywhere. And let's say that I want to use, that I want to open the generate Tmax session. So as you can see, this is with a highlighted letter L. When I hit L, it opens the file automatically in NeoVim on the split pane. Uh, I configure it in a way that when I quit the file, it closes the Tmax pane, so it's pretty clean. Um, I can also open a folder. So as you can see, the diagrams is under letter S. When I type S, it opens automatically in NeoVim, and I am using mini.files plugin that enables me to uh, show the folder and treat the folder content as a buffer. Uh, so that's cool in and of its own. So then I can close it again, and we, we used um, this in this way. I can also do uh, HTTPS google.com. And when I do this and click Control one you can see that uh, it highlighted this with F and J. If I would hit either of those letters, it would open the link in my default browser, which is Firefox. So that's pretty nice. And uh, we were able to do this using this uh, hints uh, enabled um, config here. This first part is dedicated to opening uh, all kinds of links, which is HTTP or FTP, SSH, and so on. And the second part uh, is dedicated to opening uh, 
um, a file or a folder in NeoVim and Tmux split. So let's continue and uh, see how we can do uh, opacity. So opacity is really simple. I have um, alias and I can just invoke it. And you can see that now uh, I have here my, uh, my wallpaper and part of my OBS setup. If I invoke it again, it will toggle the opacity and disappear. So what is this opacity script look like? We can swap to my scripts folder and then you can see here um, we will have here opacity Google alacrity opacity it's a very simple script um, what I'm doing here is I look into the alacrity toml file that you've seen at the beginning and I am essentially using thread to replace opacity between 1 0 and 0 0.7 which is the settings I toggle between. And I also have to change uh, Tmax settings because my Tmax also includes some uh, non-default background colors. So if I want to go full opacity and, uh, or not full opacity, but partial opacity, and just look at my wallpaper while I work, uh, that's definitely doable and uh, that's uh, how you can do it. So let's talk about themes. So how can I, um, work with themes. So first of all, let me open another pane. And here we will just list all the folders and directories. So you can see uh, my current theme, uh, I believe it's um, Moonlight or something similar, but I have other themes that I selected from the uh, Alacrity repository and I save them in my dot files. So when I hit the swap, you can see that we have um, themes with preview. So on the right hand side, you can see that immediately the listing changed because now we selected this aggressive white tomal, which is not really aggressive, but I don't know why I named it like that. We have Ayu dark, um, which is really cool. We have black and white uh, or this Dracula theme. So Alacrity can look really nicely uh, and all kinds of other themes. I also like this Erebus um, theme and I swap to it every now and then or this pretty crazy matrix, which is green. So you can make your terminal look uh, much nicer or this Subnautica dedicated theme, which reminds me of my favorite game. So let's swap to Erebus. So you can see now we swapped the, the theme and uh, everything works great. I can again do maybe transparent setting, but when I open NeoVim, you can see that it's not transparent. So I have a special, set, a special key binding that activates transparent setting also through new of him and everything looks uh, transparent now. So very quick way of uh, changing all the alacrity settings and using uh, things like um, hints uh, to make your work um, to make a workload even even faster. So again here, control two, and I can open any file. So let's say this G and S would open the theme file on the right split pane. With a little bit of patience and uh, some uh, ingenuity, you can create uh, really powerful automations with, uh, with your terminal. So that's all for today. Um, I really hope you liked it. Uh, I feel that terminals uh, are a bit underutilized uh, because they just display text, but they can do so much more. And there's a few other things I didn't show you a little bit more advanced, like opening multiple Alacrity sessions and passing through files and so on. Alacrity also supports sockets, so you can, you know, automate it through SSH. So there's all kinds of uh, other use cases. As always, uh, all the scripts will be in the video description. They're all available in my dot files. And uh, I hope you learned something and uh, share with me, please, in the comments, uh, what is your favorite terminal? Uh, how do you configure it and how do you use it? Otherwise, uh, as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.